This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we talk resolution with Joe Dombrowski. We settle some people's hash. We talk about our favorite women wrestlers, SummerSlam, Abraham Washington, how YouTube pays, and more. Stick around. Parental discretion is advised. You see, big people here, you guys think he does a great job? Does he do a great job? Does he do a great job? Hey, you better put your hands together for him. He does it all. Yeah. You guys love him. You see, Aaron, I'm going to tell you this, buddy. These people here love you. These people that you love you. got a sign that says Jockstrap. They don't like me, but they love you. But I'm going to tell you something. I think you're a piece of crap. I think that you don't know how to do your job back there. You're stupid. You're always messing up people's music. Oh I think you're a waste of freaking time. Why don't you shut up, woman? Aaron, buddy, I want to tell you this. I really do. You know, everybody here knows. With everything that I said, everybody knows. You know, that's your, that's your crippled and all that. I'm not going to talk about you're freaking awful. Oh, my. You know what, Aaron? I think that someone needs to knock a little bit of sense into you. You know what that means? You are the next victim tonight, baby. Give me my cowbell. Oh, my oh Lord. My. Is he really going to do this? Hit him, Jock. Is he really going to do this? Hit the cripple. I swear to God, this is for your own good. I'm going to put you out of your misery. Hot Wheels, you take those little hands, you grab onto those wheels, run Hit away. The run Hit away. Him. Wait a minute, what the hell? Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 333. We got a hot one here today. Um, <laughs> I'm Sorgatron. We're <laughs> Sorry. only half bad. <laughs> what? <laughs> 333, we're only half bad. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. And there yeah. on the couch is Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com at Chachi Says on your Twitters. Hi, guys. Hi. And he hates Tau. He hates Tau. Also, DJ Lunchbox joining us from the Box Cave. He's making, he's, making, he's making faces. There he is. Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> also, straight from Corpus Christi, Texas, is the Wrestle Fan. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, they don't give a lot of food and oxygen uh, in the box cave, which well, is why we're so He is deprived. And also joining us, as you just saw in that footage at the beginning oh of the God. show, is Hot yes. Wheels after his close encounter with the redneck kind. Yes, I have survived. Yes. Thank you, Matt Mason, for saving my tail. Yes, yes. I mean, then I realized, like, what was it? Because we based on what we've been doing, uh, I realized Sunday night, man, he was about to lynch you. Yeah, uh, I mean, he had the rope. I mean, yeah, he could have. He said he was going to hit me with the belt, but well, why did you have to make this a race happened? thing, Sorg? Why would you have to make this a race thing? I'm just saying what happened. I'm just illustrating a point. <laughs> um, so that that was from RWA this past Saturday. We'll talk a little bit about it more in the indie minute. Uh, but just uh, want to see uh, Hot Wheels uh, 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 debut debut not debut uh, appearance on the DVD this week. Yeah. Wow. That's not the way I want to be showed up on a DVD. I mean, no, no, it no. been a happier moment. Yeah, yeah, you, you think, you know, maybe like his I mean, birthday or something, but not not that way. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, I wouldn't have minded a lap dance from the hot chick, but no, I get almost whacked with a cowbell. If you want to tell us about your stories about being whacked with the cowbell, you can join us over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can uh, follow this show on iTunes, on Blip TV, Roku, and Stitcher for video and audio versions. Drop us a line about those cowbell, cowbell stories, too. Get to the 
Good times at Wrestling Mayhem Show. I often whack it with a cowbell. Wow. <laughs> Drop a line also to the voicemail line, the 412-206-WMS0. And, uh, of course, check out WMS Gold, uh, links, extras, everything. On that. And there's some really interesting questions that come up on the gold this week. Uh, that's Why actually... $1.99 on your iOS app store and Amazon app stores for the Android devices. Um, yeah, go check that out. And hey, joining us here shortly uh, will be Joe Dombrowski of Prime Wrestling to talk to us about Resolution 5, which is coming up in Cleveland, Ohio this Sunday. It's going to be on <laughs> iPay per view through Go Fight Live. I'll be there with a camera in my hand somewhere. Uh, so uh, go check that out. And uh, we'll be. Joey D. Joey D. Funky Joey D. He did not rap for us. Um, but in the meantime, let's get right into it with our fan interactions of the week. So uh, we got some emails. Do I, oh, I need to yes. cue something up, don't I? Yes. <laughs> well, we got a very special email. Oh, uh, you got to fill for a second there, LB. Fill, 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 fill. I will fill. gladly fill for a second. I want to give shouts out to you at... Big PPC, uh, a.k.a. Phil, on Twitter. He is doing a kick-ass <laughs> job with these fan mails as it, of late. It, it makes um, it very appropriate that we were chanting Phil. That's exactly right, because his name is fucking Phil. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, settle in for the long haul. This is a good one. I'm excited. Hey. It's me. It's me. At Big PPC, Phil. So, to say that the show has been entertaining for sure, impressive news on the Indie Minute by WrestleFan and DJ Lunchbox did amazing job at reading of email and remember when segments. Keep up the good work, Mad Mike and Bo Diggity. Woo! Motherfucking woo! <laughs> Raw was pretty good. Happy to see Brock Lesnar breaking Shawn Michaels' arm. It wasn't a bad thing. It's a good thing. I would love to see Brock Lesnar destroy Triple H at Slammer Slam. <laughs> that was not written that way, was it? No, it, was, it, 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 says, it says Summer Slam. That's my own fault. If Brock is going to have any credibility going into WrestleMania match with Undertaker or whoever he needs to destroy Triple H first. Jericho vs. Ziggler is going to steal the show like both normally do. I'm sorry, like the both normally do. I will be very happy with this match, even though I enjoy both. So even though Jericho is the man, I think it's Ziggler's time. Can Jericho win the big one? I say yes, but after his tour, most likely. <laughs> Hooray! Mr. Very European Antonio Cesaro will finally destroy Santino on the pay-per-view show. That is fine as long as after Santonio Cesaro wins, he defends the title with class and dignity the title deserves as Santino has held it way longer than his bitch-ass lame fucking having gimmick Bobby Lashley loving Milan Miracle Cobra having <laughs> sucking ass. Wow. <laughs> wow. That was all one word. Yeah. Thought of the week, Damien Sandow is amazing and makes Destroy Christian like it is on easy mode on WWE 13. You're welcome. <laughs> Sin Cars needs to lose the lightning. It is super fucking dumb. Booker T as new GM is cool, but how many assistants does a five-time WCW champion need? I guess it could be worse and Charmel could be back. Booker T voice. Oh, hell no. Tell me you didn't just say that. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Was that Russian trying to do the Booker T voice? Is that what just oh, happened? Hell no. <laughs> I think that this w is the greatest thing that's ever happened on this show ever. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta restart Shit. the music again. <laughs> just put it up. On a loop. <clears throat> WWE title match with Punk, Cena, and Show. Punk should totally still be champ after this. I guess I could see Cena winning, but only if him and Rock are fighting. January is far away. Punk should win. Sheamus versus Del Rio versus question mark, question mark. Sheamus will keep the titles unless they decide to give to person who could be added to match on SmackDown. 
Daniel Bryan versus Kane. Why? Bryan should just win because Kane has no reason to win anything. Wow. <laughs> Throw in big red crybaby part. Kane sucks the big one when it comes to winning the pay-per-view matches. Miz should beat Mysterio. Orton should not have a match because, yeah, I said Orton is terrible face. Good heel, terrible face. He is a terrible fucking snake as well. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> There's more. Primetime players should beat Little Jimmy Boom Team or whatever they are calling themselves. A.W. was hosed. He got fired because he was low on pecking order. Like Kobe Bryant's hose, low on the pole. <laughs> 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 Good, I like that. My review of Hardcore Justice. Just my opinion, but Gunnar is Mr. Intensity. Kid Cash is more intense than Gunnar. Bound for Glory stipulation match with RVD winning is great. It The Anything Goes match, or whatever it was called. Bully Ray won the tables match by powerbombing Jeff Hardy, which was so amazing. He drilled Hardy through the table. Bully Ray is the true pioneer. And... Legend of tables, matches, and hardcore. Kaz should beat Devon. That is all about that. <laughs> Thank goodness no Sting, Hogan, or Bischoff's meaning Garrett or Eric. Joe versus Angle versus Styles versus Daniels. In ladder match was amazing. Great match put on by all involved. <laughs> Styles steals it from Samora Joe's catches at the 20 points from clipboard. Four of the top wrestlers in the world in this match. Bobby Roode versus Austin Aries was amazing. They are putting, they are great at putting on a match and telling story. A double should be the next champion for a while. I hope he can put on some amazing matches with a lot of TNA talent. Who do you think should be next to challenge Austin Aries Mayhem Crew? Who do you think will win Triple H or Brock Mayhem Crew? Who <laughs> is the better GM? <laughs> Booker T or AJ. You gotta love it. It being AJ, but her character is boring, even though she is cute slash sexy. Worst thing on Impact, the AJ Styles pregnancy story and Brooke Hogan aces and rights deal. Boo this man for having such a weird daughter who looked better a while ago. Balls deep, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Frambling, take it easy. Wrestling Mayhem Show till next week. It's me. It's me. It's Big PPC, Phil. P.S. P.S. He has a P.S. P.S. I can't wait till Wade Barrett comes back. Probably after SummerSlam. Woo! Wade Barrett. Barrett fucking barrage. That is all. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, you had a couple questions in there, of course. I, first, uh, first, I'd like to say that I love how the accent went from German to Italian. <laughs> back to German, and then like a little bit of Sweden at the end with the man. <laughs> and also from the chat room, Bobby of J-Town wanted, to, wanted you to throw in a, my wife. <laughs> no, what? There's no, there's no hard, the vodka, there's none of that with the Borat, the Borat's like, oh, I'm going to make time for my wife and the uh, pen in my asshole. Zero says it turned into a little Borat, but that's for debate. Um, <laughs> all right. It was a long email, and uh, my throat hurt from coughing before the show, so there. <laughs> so going with it. All right, to the questions, then. He says, who do you think? Uh, will win uh, Triple H or Brock Mayhem Crew. I just think most of us will lose. Yep. The fans lose. Yeah. Everyone loses in that match. So uh, nobody's looking forward to that one? Nope. 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 Um, nope. Also, he asks, who is the better GM, um, uh, Booker T or AJ? AJ. AJ. Uh, why was Booker T in a tux? I have no idea. Because he was celebrating. What was Classy. it? Classy. I, is cla it just him being classy? He's I, celebrating. It's not like he doesn't have suits. He wore them every week at a, at a commentator, right? But, but no, it was penguin. a week after you won the spot in GM, and he's wearing a tuxedo like he's going to like some big like like prom like something. Like maybe, maybe he grabbed the wrong suit out of the closet. <laughs> Afro penguin. Afro penguin. What? 
<laughs> more like more like wow. like dreadlock penguin. Hook it up. Hook uh, it up. At least we'll set it up. Dreadlock. Me. He's like, yeah. He. That's why we have him around. Um, <laughs> yeah. So like, he does, can make does, the does anybody want to answer? Us. Yes. So he can do that for us. And AJ. It's okay. And I can do great yeah. handicap. Yeah. AJ. Shows. I'm going with AJ. It's more interesting. Booker AJ. T. Booker T. Why Booker takes T? Takes the fucking job seriously. Not about personal vendettas with Booker T the way it is with AJ. She's like, oh, I'm a lady, I think, with my tiny little boobies in my vagina. And Booker T's like, no, nah, dog, he did something wrong. <laughs> 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 I think you're done with impressions for the night. Okay, um, I think that, might be right. sucker. Uh, where's that other question at? Who should Austin challenge Aries. Austin Aries next? Who should challenge Austin Aries? Yeah, who's going to be the tweener? Probably, hopefully not Sting, because that always seems to be where they go with that. Christopher hey, Daniels. I'll tell you what. Christopher I'd Daniels? like to see an Austin Aries-Joe huh? match. That'd be great. Yes, That'd Joe. be great. I don't know. Do they, do they go heel on this one? I mean, it has to be somebody not in the series. You know, I bet he ends up in like a tag match or something for the main event. Because it's going to be like filler until they get there. Because who else is he feuding with, you know? That's not already in the series. Yeah, well, just the aces of eight and eights, but that's about it. Yeah, unless that comes out, and they, well, you know what? I could see them doing. I could see them doing because this is like kind of where you do the placeholder thing. Uh, Wheels, you're you're familiar with that in RWA, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> as we were discussing. Yeah. Uh, but no, this is where you do like ace of eights is probably going to come out, and they'll have a big the big brawl between all of them. Um, like you know, uh, team team TNA, which will probably be like Aries and Rude and an uneasy alliance, unless one of them's part of it, uh, and 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 other people that aren't part of Aces and Eights, you know, expect Sting yeah. to be in there. Maybe Hogan will come back for one match, brother, and uh, you know, or something and like that. And the impact zone in front of a hundred people. Exactly, exactly. You know, um, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's what we expect. I don't think you're going to have much of a defense uh, before about for Glory at this point. So, which is awesome. He's going to Bound for Glory, and you have some idea of who's who his opponent will be. So, nice. Yeah. Um, and I think that's all from his email. Now, beyond that, we got a voicemail. No, not that one. Let's do the happy one first. Okay. All right. From, well, he doesn't need any introduction. Oh, fucking diggity. Back up in the area. Now I just got done listening to Freaky's phone call. He says the NWA has new leadership. Who replaced EZE? <laughs> Is MC Ren back in the group? I know Trey's not doing anything. Ice Cube's got fucking kids' movies to make. I don't understand what the fuck Freaky's talking about. Also, Freaky, if you <laughs> want to bring a topic of relevancy, the NWA is not that. <laughs> Bring me something that doesn't have a bunch of guys who went to wrestling school hoping to make it. Realize they suck, and the only people who will give them ring time is the NWA. That shit was cool when Flair was there, like 30 or 40 years ago. Fuck it. It's gone. Just let it go. Let the new boys run. Ring of Honor, let them go. IWC, cool. I will. Shout out to RWA. Let them run. NWA, no wrestling alliance, or uh, oh, shit. no wrestlers allowed, or Freaky needs to shut the fuck up because I ran no, out of things to fill that, that doesn't work with the acronyms. So diggity out. He makes his own damn acronyms. <laughs> Your biggest problem is it doesn't work with the acronym. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why That's not? That's where you went with that. <laughs> Out of everyone on the show that should be disputing what he said, it would be you, Russell fan. Oh, I'm not disputing it. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, does anybody? I mean, one who is who here has watched NWA? I didn't know it was still a thing. Exactly right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was gonna say the only NWA you watch is like classic stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the only that's really still NWA. You know, they've had too many black eyes to recover for this, and I, I really can't. Too many black just, guys. Black, That's what I was thinking. Black oh, eyes. Hey, black hey, eyes. Hey, in the eyes. Like a, in, oh, you want a yeah. black eye? You want to get yeah, like black, black guys, guys, black eyes. They've had too okay. many black guys to recover from this. I was like, that doesn't seem kosher at all. <laughs> no, this well, isn't that I'm, one town in like Mississippi or wherever that uh, 
whatever. That doesn't um, seem right at all. I, what? <laughs> I, okay, uh, something else that's not right. Let's go to Freaky's email or voicemail. <laughs> I did not threaten you. You are admittedly. <laughs> the, it's only two minutes and 45 seconds. That basically translates to asshole. <laughs> you had. You know, even Sorg admitted that you talk shit on me. We had a little talk at Super Indie, and I thought everything was fine. But apparently I was wrong. I want to say. <laughs> I want to say. I'm pretty sure I explained that. Chachi does this. That Chachi is this persona. I like, I think I explained the thing. I didn't say, oh, this and blah, 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 and it's done. I, I'm pretty sure that was the conversation. I have. What I did was I challenged you to a fight. I did not say that I was going to hunt you down and tear you limb from limb and drink your blood in a goblet. What the fuck? Thank God. Yeah, where did, where did that come from? What the fuck? And, and, and who's challenging anybody to a real fight on a wrestling podcast? It just It's just, all about fake fighting. Just finish, That's why we're here. <laughs> just, we're here for the fake fighting. Just finish yeah. the voicemail. I did not do that. I simply challenged you to a fight. Now, this is high school? You yes. don't want to accept that fight. And I will say this. Considering all the things you, you know, and I guess I'll tie this in now. This is from the latest show. I really don't feel like going through all the footage from the show. <laughs> but can we get you to admit? Will you admit that you did say you were better than the you thought you were better than the show? Can we get you to admit that? You've interrupted the wrestling, the indie wrestling segment. I'm not sure why. Because <laughs> you don't respect it out of it. Can we, can, will you admit that you've just treated wrestling, been very disrespectful towards wrestling at times? Now, let's take that to Ring of Honor. A company that let's. I love very much. <laughs> a you company I don't talk about. When they air in Pittsburgh. You talk, when referring to them, you talk about why you don't watch them and the standards you have for a wrestling show when they meet your standards. And by the way, they air at 5.30 and 11 on your local Fox affiliate. Go and watch them. No, they don't, actually. They don't hear. But I mean, at this point, you know, you're just spreading lies. Of course, it's going to piss me off. It's not a lie. It's spreading lies. It's not, that's, in Pittsburgh, it's not a Fox affiliate. Why your attitude doesn't it's piss network. off people that are actually in the business? I mean, these are. <laughs> it stopped. Okay. Okay, it stopped. Well, well, first of all, I gotta say, uh, uh, last I knew, it's five or five thirty on Saturday on my Pittsburgh, not the Fox affiliate, and yeah, also replays at eleven thirty p.m. on Sundays. Yeah. Freaky. That I'm aware of. Lies. And I don't watch it every week. So, okay. And there was plenty more. Yes. Well, but no. this was... That was it. Well, that was it for this. But there was more voicemails, but I kind of oh, stopped at yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Fuck that. Uh, for what we're going to deal with um, this week. I, I have a written response. You have a prepared <laughs> statement. I took a week. <laughs> to uh, a weekend. Because he did it on Friday. Um, but I took a weekend to prepare a written response. Are you going to read it? In an accent. No. <laughs> I'm even dropping kayfabe. I'm going to be completely 100% real Chachi for this. Yes, podcast kayfabe. Shoot. Holy shit. Um, shoot. This is talking to you from Anthony Walker. Okay. Uh, <laughs> a nice attempt to take back what you said. However, it will be covered. We don't have a problem. This is something that you are creating to bring yourself more attention. What we covered at IWC was introductions because I was working and that's it. Um, so, uh, they were in order, then I came up with better answers, so they answered the questions that you asked in there. Um, inviting one to, to fight is a threat. Yes. Mm. I'm an asshole. No, I don't want to fight you. I'm an adult. Uh, (laughs) four years ago, you don't have to go back through the footage. Four years ago, I did say I was better than the show. As I was leaving the show. 
to pursue other opportunities. And sorry for that, he tells me he's better than the show every night after the show. <laughs> Don't, no. <laughs> Stop. So sorry. Hard. Stop. Um, to cover your ROH comments... I've never talked about ROH. I don't know when they air in Pittsburgh. I've never mentioned when they air in Pittsburgh, nor do I care when they air in Pittsburgh. You have the wrong person. Uh, check your facts before you start accusing people. Um, the only reason I interrupted the Indie Minute was to mess with WrestleFan. That was he doesn't hate indie wrestling. He just hates me. <laughs> that was that was an established thing. Um, if you don't have the time or the patience to listen to the whole show. You're not going to get the jokes. Um, every single wrestling fan ever has disrespected wrestling at one point or another. Huh. Okay. Okay. We, we go do ahead, it. Go ahead. We do that's it every week. No, no, no. That's a good yeah. point. Just look at Mad Mike tweeting at uh, Kurt Angle. Look at me tweeting at Kurt Angle. Yeah. I, I mean, every single wrestling fan ever. Oh, no. The responses are coming in. <laughs> Freaky? I don't know. I just oh. heard that noise. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, once again, get your facts before ch calling in. Um, I don't piss people off in the business because what I do on the show is an act. That's it. I don't act like this in real life. I treat people with respect. You can ask Russell Fan after the show. <laughs> he's, he's a genuinely sort of nice person. <laughs> <laughs> he treats me very nice every time I see him. Yeah. Uh, this persona is not real. It's fake. You know? Like wrestling. <laughs> the, sh the stuff that we get together every Tuesday night to talk about. Um, so, it's at this point, Big Freaky, that I've answered all of your questions. Um, so, I have a request for you. Keep my name out of your mouth. Um, if you are going to call in and leave hour-long voicemails, that's fine. Um, do it to the other guys. Leave me out of it. Oh, thanks, Chachi. <laughs> um, I, I don't I don't want to talk to you anymore. I don't want you to mention me. I don't want you to, to bring me up in passing. We're done. Um, and if you do mention me in a voicemail, it won't be played on the show. He'll be ignored. Um, it, it, this this whole thing is done, finished. Yeah, um, we're seriously. If if you if if anybody calls in with stuff that is just completely like we didn't really talk about that, uh, like that, we're just gonna yeah. This this is done. It no, um, more. no more. Which we've done in the past. We have a re right to reserve the right to you know what gets on the show and everything like that. So yeah. all right. So on that note, I've covered everything you've you've brought up. Um, I think rather fairly. If you're going to call in, you know, yeah, talk, debate, whatever, but it, it's fun. You know, uh, th this show is supposed to be for fun, for fans having fun. That's the point. And uh, and uh, please uh, use the voicemail hotline appropriately. Yes. So. Uh, all right. And with that, we go to the Russell fan. Hey, Russell hey, fan. Hey, hey, this week. Indy Minute. Uh, first thing I'm going to talk about here <laughs> in the evening, and it was actually, I think, uh, I may be wrong, but I think it was brought up by Phil Claycomb to me, uh, wanted me to talk about the Ring of Honor uh, iPay-per-view that was this past weekend. Uh, Ring of Honor had an iPay-per-view this past weekend. <laughs> uh, uh, it was called uh, Boiling Point, I believe. Uh, yeah, I believe that was the name for the show. Uh, the main event, which was Kevin Steen uh, retaining the ROH world title against Eddie Kingston in a Ring of Honor versus Chikara match. Um, heard it was a very great event. There was a lot of uh, great stuff to come from there. Um, a lot of interesting stuff. One of the controversies that came out was that apparently there were some reports that Kevin Steen had attacked two fans uh, after the show. Uh, apparently it is, a, it is a work and that it was basically planned, so there's not uh, that confusion out there. Uh, I believe it was caught on the iPay-Per-View towards the end, so apparently it was planned by Ring of Honor, so don't don't go too crazy. Um but yeah, it, uh, I heard it was a really good event, and they have another eye pay per view coming up. Uh, very interesting. They have an eye paper coming up in the month of September. I believe it is Death Before Dishonor. Um, and the big news that came out today from their newswire um, that I am extremely excited about. I mentioned it on Twitter. I am immensely excited for this. Uh, making his debut for Ring of Honor will be uh, the former ACW heavyweight champion, uh, Texas star, St. Louis star, ACH. 
Hmm. Um, and that is going to be absolutely amazing. I'm really thinking of buying that iPay per view just to see that because uh, he's proven himself as his way to be an amazing, amazing talent uh, on the independent scene. I'm super, super excited to see uh, him show his skills in a large platform like Ring of Honor. I mean, you know, on iPay per view, it's going to be a great opportunity for him. And if anyone deserves it, it's him. Um, so I would definitely look out for that's Death Before the Sonner, uh Saturday, September 15th at the uh, Frontier Fieldhouse in Chicago Ridge, Illinois. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, I believe the main event is going to be Kevin Seen defending the Ring of Honor World title against Rhino, um, which also, that will also be a really good uh, match. Uh, and I believe the finals of the tag team title tournament will also be held at that event. So you can go check them out at ROHwrestling.com and get more information on that. Um, and then I transitioned into, uh, there's a, uh, line of events coming up next uh, this weekend uh, for Chikara Pro Wrestling. Uh, the event uh, uh, the 17th uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin for Shoot a Crooked Arrow. And uh, on the 18th in, I believe, Indianapolis, Illinois, uh, will be the Ring of Wax. Um, that will be a very interesting uh, series of events because they will hold the semifinals and the finals of the Young Lions Cup tournament. Um, so, uh, unlike last year, there isn't a specific event for Young Lions Cup. It was uh, done throughout the events uh, that they had, and the finals will be at on the 18th, the semifinals on the 17th. Um, so, uh, ACH is also in the semifinals of that tournament, along with uh, Mr. Touchdown from Chikara, um, uh, Jacob Hammermeyer uh, from Chikara, and I believe another, uh, Anthony Stone, I believe. Um, they will be competing for the Young Lions Cup. And also on the 17th, there's a big match uh, between uh, Mike Quackenbush taking on Colt Cabana, which that's uh, going to be a very interesting match. Uh, if you want tickets for that event, you can go to ChicagoPro.com, uh, buy your tickets there, and get more information on that. Uh, and go support a great promotion like Chicago Pro Wrestling. Uh, the next thing I do want to talk about is uh, an event I will be going to this weekend for Anarchy Championship Wrestling uh, called Distrust, Dismay, and Antisocial Behavior. Uh, at the Mohawk in Austin, Texas. Um, it's going to be a great event. The main event will be a uh, six-man tag team matchup when uh, ACH and the Kings of the Underground take on uh, Children of Pain 2.0 in Sean Vex and the Lost Boys. Uh, Christina Von Erie will be returning, uh, former TNA star, uh, making her debut in Austin, Texas for ACW. Um, Eric Cannon from the Midwest will be down. Um, and there's going to be a lot of great stuff. If you want more information and tickets, you can go to anarchychampionshipwrestling.com. Check them out. Also visit their YouTube channel because they have a bunch of new matches out from their past events. Um, so go check them out. Go support Anarchy Championship Wrestling. And if you're in the Texas area, I hope to see you at that event. Um, and uh, also to note, uh, Smart Wait, hold on. Video. Hold on. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Russell fan, you just said if you're in the Texas area. <laughs> you realize that Texas is bigger than half of the United States. You realize that, we're that, asking. That, that's a very good point. You realize we're asking why you weren't at the Dallas Raw last night. <laughs> yes, because that, that, that is about an eight-hour drive. So if you're in, if you are in the Austin, Texas vicinity, where there's a, you can you, you don't drive and you don't waste too much gas. How about that? <laughs> Um, <laughs> That's fine. I I had to fi I had to make you fix that. I tell you what, if you're in the Pennsylvania area, make sure you go to IWC in Elizabeth, PA next week. I don't care if you're in Philadelphia or Reading, PA. Make sure you get your ass down there, okay? <laughs> Philadelphia is like a fingernail in the, in the side. Uh, uh, did I say Philadelphia? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is a fingernail the size of what Texas. You is. know that little nub that sticks out of Texas that goes into Oklahoma? Yeah. That's That's okay. where Pennsylvania could fit. Okay. <laughs> It, it's a sad state of affairs. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, it so, is a sad uh, state. Yeah. Um, Smart Mark Video uh, is the other thing I want to mention. They, uh, go check out their stuff. They have stuff from Anarchy Championship Wrestling, from Prime Wrestling, um, who we'll be talking about uh, later on in the show. Uh, stuff from Chikara, CCW. Everyone, uh, everyone's getting out there on Smart Mark Video and Smart Mark Video On Demand. They actually added a new set of DVDs um, from Kaiju Big Battle. Yeah. Um, and if you don't know what Kaiju Big Battle yes. is, please look it up because it is absolutely amazing. Uh, they have a set of DVDs both on their uh, on their on their website. It's I believe twelve ninety nine each. Uh, on Smart Mark Video on Demand, they're nine ninety nine. Uh, but they also have a dollar ninety nine sampler. 
which is a, a bunch of different matches from a uh, yeah, Kaiju Big Battle. I'm so I would definitely I'm, go check them out. I'm finding the downloads are at eleven ninety nine here. Are, are uh, they, they, down, uh, they have the downloads um, on Smart Mark Video. If you go to Smart Mark Video on Demand, okay, okay, those are nine ninety nine, and they go from the website. You run them off like their player that they have on there. Okay, um, and and those are nine ninety nine. So I would definitely uh, check those out uh, and go experience Kaiju Big Battle because God, that stuff is amazing. Wait, 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 what is Kaiju Big Battle? I I know it, but but tell it's the fans. Awesome. Kaiju, Kaiju Big Battle sort of a spawn. Uh, they had a, a, I think they still do because the ring announcer in Chikara is was linked to Kaiju Big Battle. Uh, have a relationship with Chikara. Basically, it's a variety of different monsters, um, and different like radioactive based characters fighting uh, in a fighting in a ring that is depicted to look like a city in the fact that there are buildings and they're basically like Godzilla monsters fighting in this giant, in this ring filled with buildings in it. And it's probably the most amazing thing you'll ever see. There, you, There's their website. And you have stuff like that. Russell which, fan. Yes. You know the kind of stuff I like. <laughs> Why would you not tell me about this sooner? How do you not know about I told you about that? this. No, you didn't. I completely like. No one has ever told point. me about this ever, dude. I compl- I had to have told you. There was a sandwich that no. was wrestling, and no it one has ever told me about this. There's a can of soup. It's amazing. <laughs> it's people in giant foam outfits or uh, costumes wrestling. No one's told me about it's, this. It's tremendous. They had the team at King of Trios one year. It's fucking amazing. No one's told me about this. I'm, I'm a little well, sad. You now have lost Tachi because he's watching it now. No, <laughs> that That's up to his uh, standards. I am playing uh, World's Biggest Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that Let's Play challenge in. Check it out on Coin to begin.com. Definitely, yeah. Um, and uh, the next thing I do want to know, I think any minute, I want to send a um, big uh, shout out. Uh, to friend of the wrestling mayhem show, longtime friend uh, Johnny Gargano, who t- today he's celebrating his 25th birthday. So just wanted to throw that out there. Woo-hoo! Also, I would highly suggest if you don't have him on Facebook yet, I would highly suggest that he posted a very intriguing, uh, eye-opening blog post um, recently on his Facebook page as to why he got into professional wrestling. It's a very interesting read. I would highly, su- highly suggest that you uh, go check that out. It's very, very entertaining, and we'd like to wish a big happy birthday to the friend of the show, uh, Johnny Gargano. Johnny Gargano is 14 years old. (laughs) 14 years old. I can't believe it either. He's 14. Amazing. Already a heavyweight champion. He's 14 years old. He's he's accomplished so much. It's really impressive. (laughs) Definitely. Um, And the next thing I want to talk about is our friends at Renegade Wrestling Alliance. I know Sorgatron Media was in attendance for their aggression event that was this past weekend. Yes, we were. It was a fun, a fun show. Uh, I, as I said, probably one of the most fun I've had at a show, uh, you know, filming it at I'm least. glad you had fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tremendous match between, uh, Jimmy Nuts and Joseph Brooks, um, of course, that we've, uh, talked about here on the yeah. show before. And, if uh... If you weren't there live, buy the DVD. There you go, there you go. And you might have some other options that could pick that, uh, show up in the near future if we get those sorted out. I'm just saying. Uh, but there's yeah, aggression hey, for... Try and learn how to spell. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's a lot to do. It's a lot to do. You know, I had spell check just a little bit. But uh, yeah, go check that out. RWALive.com. What the hell? I, I just saw a Frank Sinatra quote in the chat room, and I have no idea why. Um, <laughs> yeah, so go check out RWALive.com. The wrap up will be up there shortly, uh, and the teaser for the DVD is already up there. As uh, we were showing here, uh, so yeah, cause that webmaster is really fast at what oh, he does. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Uh, so in the meantime, let's get into our interview. And on the line right now, guys, is a uh, old time friend of the show here, Joe Dombrowski of Prime Wrestling, joining us once again on the show. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Uh, it's been a busy couple of weeks, but uh, I'm pumped up for this weekend. I hope you guys are too, and I want to thank you guys for, uh, as always, having me on here to uh, to share with everybody what I'm up to. Excellent, excellent. Now I know usually you know we're talking about a lot of local shows that people don't get a chance to check out uh, until they come out on DVD, uh, hopefully later. Uh, but this is not that kind of case. This is actually going to be an eye pay per view with resolution uh, this Sunday um, on on. You know, from Cleveland, Ohio. 
Yeah, and I think it goes back to um, being in the prime of our existence, so to speak, with the whole um, Prime Wrestling rebranding campaign where we are no longer uh, Cleveland-based. We're no longer uh, Ohio-based. Uh, we've outgrown uh, those monikers. It was, it, it was time to, to, to reach the next step of our existence. And certainly we're very, very proud of our roots and very proud of our home base, but at the end of the day, I think we have a product that... Uh, certainly stretches far beyond uh, any type of regional capabilities. When you look at the fact that we have branched into iPay-Per-View uh, starting last year with uh, with Resolution 4, uh, the fact that we are on television nationwide uh, via the Sportstime Ohio uh, television network, uh, and looking into further things as far as distribution and sponsorship and, and, and DVD deals, uh, we already have one in place with SmartMark Video, and we're looking to add more in the months ahead as well. Um, this show really has something for everybody, no matter what type of wrestling you're into and no matter where geographically uh, you may be located. And uh, we'll be going through Go Fight Live, which is the same organization uh, that we did iPay-Per-View through last year and also the same organization that, uh, that was working with Ring of Honor for about a two-year time span. Um, and uh, their, their work speaks for itself. They've done amazing work, and... Uh, Thanks to them, we'll be able to bring this product to the masses 100% live and, of course, uh, as a video on demand later on as well. Excellent, excellent. Uh, and, and, and that's a, you know, a, a big challenge, of course, uh, one that uh, it'll be interesting to see because you, you've done pay, IP reviews before um, as opposed to the TV production. I mean, it's really kind of flying without a net, huh? It absolutely is. Um, but we have uh, a very, very skilled uh production team and i'm not just saying that to uh uh the kisser end because i know uh that's something near and near to your heart as well but uh oh, don't look uh, at me it's made... all it's all mike it's all mike <laughs> <laughs> we've made a lot of positive improvements over the past 12 months especially uh with the production team we completely revamped uh i would say at least 90 percent uh of the people on that end of the spectrum and um you know, it's it's it is an interesting experience going 100 percent live. But I couldn't have been prouder with the effort last year, uh, and I expect uh, much of the same this year. Uh, last year, we had no audio issues, no video issues, uh, no nothing, um, and 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 doing TV. Um, you know, it's it's kind of the standard that we edit everything live, and 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 get as much of a complete product as we can before we walk out of the building. So, um, you know, in some ways it's business as usual, but in a lot of other ways it's definitely amped up. There's definitely a lot more excitement and pressure um, because uh, there is no second takes. There's no let's edit this out in post, let's add this in in post. Um, what you see is what you get, and I, I think you'll enjoy what you do see. And now I've attended uh, more or less as a fan the last two resolutions, and I've often described it to people as this really feels like the WrestleMania. Well, in, of course, it's on a grander scale with what you guys are doing now, but it's felt like the WrestleMania of the local indies. You know, it's a bigger venue. It's got a bigger feel to it than just about anything uh, de definitely down in here in Pittsburgh, anything in, in the tri-state area I can even I can even think of. Yeah, and I think that's a fair assessment because we we try to uh, present resolution on such a uh, larger scale than a typical wrestling show. We don't want it to just be a wrestling show. We want it to be an event. Uh, you're going to see uh, probably at least 1,500 fans there live in the building. Uh, you're going to see a live musical performance uh, by a band called the Delaney's, which I believe are actually based in the Pittsburgh area. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be performing the Resolution theme song. Um, you're going to be seeing, uh, during intermission, uh, the Cleveland Police Athletic League will be uh, doing a, a special recognition ceremony for some great young kids in the area who've made some positive contributions uh, in their schools and their communities and certainly their homes as well. Um, you know, we've, we've gotten some great media attention. Um, you know, I've been doing radio interviews. Uh, it's It's... It's something that I want to be larger than life. I don't want uh, this to be looked at as, as just another run-of-the-mill show. When our guys are a fantastic talent roster, to be looked at as the larger-than-life personalities that they are, and uh, to give them a grand stage and great platform and give our fans something to thank them for, uh, for supporting us, whether it was 
you know, attending uh, one or two live shows a year, whether it was watching us on television every single week. Um, we appreciate every little bit uh, uh, anybody has, has given to our product to help us build and grow. Um, you know, when we had started in 2007, a lot of people didn't give us uh, two or three months. But uh, I'm proud to be sitting here two months shy of, of five years going strong. And uh, that's what this company is all about, the enduring spirit. Uh, and that's why Resolution has that tagline this year. It's very fitting. Excellent, excellent. Now let's talk about, uh, whoa, where am I at? There we go. Um, let's talk about a little bit about uh, who's going to be there. Of course, you know, if somebody that hasn't followed necessarily Prime Wrestling, uh, the local TV show, or of course the show is available on, or I'm sorry, not just local, of course, you guys are, are nationwide on on, uh, on the satellites and everything uh, through Sports Time Ohio. Uh, but there's a lot, for somebody that hasn't followed along for a while, uh, there's a lot of names that I think a lot of people will be interested in, um, you know, right off the bat. Um, you know, P.D. Williams, Zach Gowan, Rhino is going to be there. Um, can you talk about, a little bit about, uh, you know, what, where are you looking forward to out of uh, the big names there? And what, what do they bring to uh, the promotion like this? Well, it goes back to uh, just the expansion overall growth of the company that we have, in my opinion, uh, the absolute best talent roster that we have ever had, uh, bar none. Not even close. Uh, uh, so many great, so much great talent has has come along over just the past six months. Looking at Jimmy Jacobs and Zach Gowan, who have both become uh, uh, seemingly regular members of our active roster. Uh, Rhino will be there. Petey Williams will be there, and of course, um, almost a who's who of of uh, uh, names. Not just. Uh, I guess you could say locally based here in the region, but certainly not local just to this region. Uh, your Johnny Gargano's, your M Dog 20 Mac Crosses, uh, your Crimsons, your Facades, your Gorys, uh, your Bobby Beverly's, your Bobby Shields, all of these guys who um, work so hard and go the extra mile to better themselves, to better their careers, to better uh, the company that they're in. Um, but but back to the question about the 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 major stars, um, Rhino, the Man Beast, the former two time world champion, has accepted an open challenge of Jason Bain. Bain is the most dominant man in the company's history. He is four and zero at Resolutions. Uh, he pinned Raven at Resolution three two years ago. Um, but if you look on uh, our, our YouTube account, youtube.com slash Prime Wrestling TV, we posted. Uh, the complete sit-down interviews with both Rhino and Bane that have been airing over the course of the past four or five weeks on television, uh, you can see very evidently as those interviews go on the intensity and the anger just building in both men as they think more and more about the test they have in front of them. And I can't remember the last time that, that either one has faced a test uh, of this size or this magnitude. And, and anybody that watches my show has seen Bain just trample through so many uh, athletes of, of various calibers. Anybody who's been watching uh, the Ring of Honor TV show has seen Rhino just obliterate people uh, time and time again. And if you want to go back to the old uh, Gorilla Monsoon adage, irresistible force and immovable object, that's it right there. Um as far as Petey Williams goes, uh, that's your independent wrestling dream match. Petey Williams and Matt Cross have never, ever met one-on-one -on -one anywhere in this world. Uh, it's going to happen for the first time ever this Sunday. And uh, um, some of the Matt Cross critics are starting to question him. He's lost a, a few uh, matches recently, a bit of a losing streak. I think Petey Williams is trying to capitalize on that, try to use the Matt Cross perceived slump to get his own name back in the headlines. Uh, Petey's still in excellent shape. He's, he's very committed to his body and, and to fitness and diet. And uh, this very well could easily steal the show. And uh, talking about unique matchups, uh, Zach Gowan and Gregory Iron. Uh, Greg idolized Zach uh, when at age 16 he sat in front of his television and watched Zach pin the big show, bust open Vince McMahon, share rings with Hulk Hogan and Roddy Piper, and seeing Zach Gowan on TV legitimately inspired Greg to have the confidence to chase his own dream of being a pro wrestler. If not for Zach Gowan, Greg would not be here in this business. And unfortunately, thanks to the manipulations of, of Nate Matson, 
Zach has gotten the idea in his head that Greg is trying to show Zach up, take his spot, uh, steal his publicity, steal his booking, steal his spotlight. Um, Greg has been on uh, Sports Illustrated and ESPN and Fox News and all over, I mean all over the local Cleveland uh, radio and TV media over the past uh, uh, year or so. But he's earned every bit of it. And, and, and unfortunately, Zach's got a few lingering insecurities, I think. And he's turned into the very thing that he's hated for so many years, and that's a bully. And uh, the most unique match in pro wrestling, Gregory Iron is trying to beat that bully out of Zach Gallon. And uh, that's just a small sample of what's in store on Sunday. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so I wanted to uh, open it up here for the other guys. And I know at least one of them has questions. Uh, Russ fan, uh, LB, you guys got anything? Oh, are you still there? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Um, well, because I, uh, I attended Resolution uh, uh, last year, Resolution 4. It was a great event. Um, definitely an honor to attend. And I agree with Sorg that it definitely feels like a, the WrestleMania of the independence in the sense that it's very well hyped and well, you know, it feels like a big event. Um, what do you think about, uh, I guess, like the tradition of resolution, you know, um, and what the event has become to be such, you know, be the event that it has, that it has become, I guess. I'm so proud of the fact that resolution, uh, has sort of, of become an entity all its own where, uh, that name, uh, in such a short amount of time means, uh, so much to so many people. Where, um, I mean, there's not many independent wrestling events where, uh, you'll do a first day on sale for tickets and, and, you know, you'll get a, a mass response. There's not many, um, wrestling events where, uh, the athletes involved are preparing for two, three, four months, um, buying new gear, uh, taking bigger risks, uh, you know, uh, again, going that extra mile, um, for this event, because they know uh, that between the live crowd, the DVD audience, the pay-per-view audience, um, it's something special. And uh, we say it every year. It's almost become cliche uh, to regular viewers. But every year, uh, Resolution raises the bar. And I think if you if you went to PrimeWrestling.com and you purchased each of the previous four events on DVD and watched them uh, uh, four days in a row... Uh, you would notice just glaringly it would it would it would slap you in the face the the changes and improvements uh, from talent to production uh, uh, across the board uh, for the event. So uh, I think now that we uh, now that we are under the prime wrestling banner and and looking more national and looking bigger and looking stronger and looking uh, more for more diverse talent than ever before, I will say there's um, a couple well-known uh, uh, wrestling talents that uh, we've been in touch with that are interested in in potentially uh, uh, jumping on board for our next season. Uh, the sky's the limit, honestly. I can't wait to see where we are next year. And uh, if all goes according to plan, we'll be even bigger than we are now. Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. LB, I uh, want to give you a chance if you have anything to ask Joe. Oh, he's good. <laughs> uh Chachi, yes. I believe you have one last question for Mr. Dombrowski I before do. we let him go. Uh, it, Joe, we have the pleasure of talking at least once a month. and we just... uh, Yes, pleasure is a word we could use for that, yes. <laughs> um, and we uh, often discuss some odd odd topics. Um, that, go, however, that go along with pro wrestling. Yes, that go along with pro wrestling. Um, however, we have a running question for interviews on the show that was given to us uh, by a fan of the show, uh, Bo Diggity, who uh, likes to ask every single person that graces our presence, if you were a vegetable, what vegetable would you like to be? If I was a vegetable? Yes. Yes. Um, well, I guess keeping in line with the professional wrestling theme, I would pick a potato so I could punch the idiot that invented that question in the face as hard as I could. <laughs> wow. 
That is the most angry response we've gotten to that question. Well, I'm happy I could help. And and the fact <laughs> that you uh, consider me so angry puts me in a great mood. <laughs> All right, wonderful. <laughs> awesome. Uh, thanks a lot, Joe. Again, um, resolution is this Sunday on iPay-Per-View. I believe bell time is 3 p.m. That's right. Doors will open at 2, uh, and I believe at about 2 we're going to start showing uh, – for the pay-per-view crowd, uh, we're going to start looping our video packages. And if you haven't checked those out yet, uh, youtube.com slash Prime Wrestling TV. We have, I think, five or six great videos that uh, recap the past three or four months if you're new to the scene. Yep, and uh, the, uh, other, other than what we discussed, a uh, casket match between Fasad and Gori, who we uh, talk about a lot on the show, both uh, friends of the show, uh, and other great stuff on there. Uh, go check that out. Thanks, Joe Dombrowski. Check him out on Twitter, at Joe underscore Dombrowski, and uh, and don't ask him about what vegetable he'd be. Yeah. <laughs> it probably won't go well. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to give a little preview of what's coming up at Resolution uh, and what's going on on uh, WMS School. What it gets interesting this week, really interesting and somewhat questionable. We'll be right back with Remember When, Mayhem Show. I'll take a peep for it. <laughs> All right, LB. It's your time to shine. <laughs> you can be a star. Killer look on his face when he a does th- this deed. A thorough process to figure out <laughs> which <laughs> which dicks are okay to suck and which ones aren't. Um, Let's talk about vegetables. <laughs> you know, I don't, you want a better question? How about a vegetable question? How about that? <laughs> Yo, <laughs> bitch, <laughs> what vegetable? Who the fuck puts Ezekiel Jackson as number two on a power ranking of anything? Oh, hi there. Now, for those of you that didn't read the name on this account, or aren't one of my personal friends, or you haven't heard me talk about anything for more than five minutes, I like to let you know that I'm a professional wrestling fan. Yes, yes, I... Go ahead. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. The, 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 you, you, oh, you're done? You're done? Okay, you're done? Okay, good. I've been a professional mm-hmm. wrestling fan for about 10 years now, and I like to say that I'm a very you know knowledgeable about the topic. But in all honesty, I haven't seen a lot of stuff that's out there. There's so much of the wrestling world that's been untapped that I haven't gotten a chance to see. So that's when the brainstorm from this idea came about. I want to do a series of videos on this account where I get suggestions from anyone that watches this video or can message me a suggestion of a match, one match, that I want to watch every week. That match can be good, it can be bad, it can be funny, it can be serious, it can be anything you want it to be. It could be from the US, Canada, Mexico, Japan, Portugal, Sweden, the Netherlands, I don't care as long as it's wrestling. I'll sit here, watch the match, and give a live review of it as it happens. Now you may be thinking, Eamon, this may be like every other person that reviews matches on YouTube, which goes a lot like this. So this match, I'd give it uh, four and a half stars. I would give it five, but it's, it's hard to even get a five. You need to be five more minutes longer. I mean, at least. I mean, could that you cannot. No. No. Because it has to be an absolutely perfect storyline match with the in-ring work that has to be to a key thing just really came together and that's why I had to give it two and a half stars. Stop you right there. It's not going to be like that. I wanted to inject a bit of humor into everything that I do, so that is what these videos are going to be like. So you can help start this project right now. Leave a comment on this video or message me on my Twitter or Facebook accounts of a match that you want me to see. The only requirement I hold is that I want you to send me a link of the match either through YouTube, Dailymotion, or some video viewing site. I don't want to get it illegally through some streaming process or some torrent. I want to do this completely legally with the fairness to the wrestlers and the promotion so that's my challenge out to you i hope you accept it and i hope i can dive into a brand new world of professional wrestling i'll see you next time kelly kelly is ranked above serena deeb what the fuck
What's up, hot dogs? DJ Lunchbox here. Let's talk about some fucking wrestling. All right, let's get started. Let's see. No. 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 Ugh. No. Oh, here we go. Uh, Abraham Washington got fired for something that nobody really gives a shit about. No. No. Fuck this. Let's talk about SummerSlam. Turn around, bright eyes. Santino and Antonio Cesaro are on the pre-show match. Hey, squash match. Raw Race Wars. The end of the Raw Race Wars. We get what will hopefully be the end of the Raw Race Wars when Air Jimmy Fuckboom faces the primetime players in a match that no one really cares about. $20 says Mexicans will show up. Doesn't matter which ones. Speaking of Mexicans, The Miz will have his work cut out for him. Speaking of Mexicans... We are. We are doing that. Speaking of Mexicans, The Miz will have his work cut out for him, making a tiny, irrelevant masked man look good. Best of luck, Miz. Stay away from his knees, or your push will get cut off at yours. Dolph Ziggler will have what is sure to be an excellent match against Chris Jericho. Watch it. Enjoy it. Try not to think about Piper's pit. <laughs> Kane is a match against Daniel Bryan, because why the fuck not? Shawn Michaels, with his arm in a sling, will be in the corner of Triple H with his career in a sling as he faces off against I Still Look Like I Ate a Child, Brock Lesnar, and his mouthpiece life partner, Paul Heyman. It'll be brutal. It'll be intense. It will probably be the main event that no one will watch. All right, on to other things. There's a new Wade Barrett promo. Instead of showing it to you, I will link it in one of those annoying YouTube annotation things so that WWE doesn't yell at me again because I like their stuff. This is because of WWE. Their fault. And now for your amusement, I'll do the rest of this video wearing a mask. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. What's up, hot dogs? DJ Lunchbox here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and I am going to take you through a journey of the mind. We are going to enjoy a little segment that uh, we here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show like to call Remember When? Uh, actually, I think it was around this time last year. It might have been the year before. Uh, I don't really know, but <laughs> there was something ridiculous that happened. Jimmy Hart. That's right. Jimmy Hart, the mouth of the South, started making noise in the news. Noise in the news! Uh, that sounds similar. That's alliteration. That's not what I'm getting at. Uh, he was uh, promoting this uh, strange promotion called Wrestlelicious. And they had, they had this one promo, uh, and it was an awful awful song where they were just kind of dance around and be like it's wrestlelicious baby and we all wrote our own wrestlelicious raps and it was going to be this amazing women's promotion and they they had all these interesting characters and they hired and they were like we're going to be on tbs we're not on tbs we're going to be on tnt we're not on tnt so i am amazed that you found the website because the reason that i brought up wrestlelicious as this week's remember when is because i didn't think anybody remembered when I thought Wrestlelicious <laughs> was long dead. What does the website say? Is it dead? Uh, well, it says it's showing on one, two, three, four, five, six different networks. I know one's what? at least a Canadian uh, uh, network. I think America One might be something over in Europe. Tough TV. Uh, what's that? I don't know what that says. Oh, it just says viewer discretion despi despised. What? And Mav TV, which I think is what it is here in America. So, uh, sure. but, uh, yeah, other than that, it, 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 it looks active. It doesn't, I mean, I don't see anything indicating, Hey, we're doing something right now, but I highly doubt they're filming any longer. Well, I Ciro said it just came back like a month ago. Yeah. I, I, I heard about them filming like new, new rounds of, uh, of shows. That's gross. Wrestlelicious uh, never really looked good. So let's ask some questions for the panel. Round the horn real quick. Everybody, I want to know who your favorite female wrestler is. Wrestle fan, fam favorite female wrestler, lay it on us. Oh, shit. I'm going to be really impartial with this one. 
<laughs> uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe because I see her. I mean, every month, and she does awesome stuff. I'm gonna go with friend of the show, Rachel Summerlin. She's doing cool shit. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. Sorgatron. Ah. <laughs> uh, I would have to go with Lita. Close second, Daphne. I don't think Daphne did quite as much. Uh, she was more of an interesting figure. But uh, Lita, Lita was definitely uh, my favorite, like, you know, just in general, because she was like kind of the first alternative looking one uh, that did a lot of stuff and had a lot of great matches with uh, Trish Stratus and, and uh, uh, did a lot of stuff, you know, beside the Hardy Boys and everything. So, um, you know, it's just kind of like th- that era that, uh, that I really enjoyed. So, Excellent. Chachi, favorite lady wrestler? Mickey James. Really? Yeah. Good answer. Wow. I mean, really? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Now is Hot this... Wheels. Oh, uh, sorry. Mine. I'd have to say Gail Kim because she's been impressive in both companies she's been in, and she's a very personable person to meet in person. She's very a f- a friendly person. That and she and she's wrestling. also a person. <laughs> And the person I'm yeah. glad someone else <laughs> caught that. Shut and it wouldn't be the and it wouldn't be the dick that was just like uh, you said. Person Why not? You are times. a dick, Chachi. Come on, <laughs> Chachi's better than this question. I am better than this question. <laughs> Fuck you! I'm better than all of this. All right, I'll be back there. Better than than personally, wrestling. personally, I'm a big fan of Beulah McGillicuddy. She did amazing, excellent, pioneering, wonderful things in ECW. I was a big fan then, I'm a big fan now, and I'm also a big fan of Karma, but if you've ever listened to the show, you know that, and you know why. Folks, this has been the journey of the mind. This has been uh, a trip down memory lane. This, my friends, has been, remember when? A lot of wrestlelicious out there, man. A lot of wrestlelicious out there. I just think that when she was finally given a shot, that Mickey James is a very talented wrestler. Yeah, and even mm-hmm. the stuff like back when she was doing the WEW stuff, which was like glorified wrestling porn. Right. Like she was having great matches on those DVDs. Yeah. That <laughs> she was the wrestler of the. Yeah, 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 the, yeah Alexis Lurie, You know, I mean, that's you know. So we should we should give shouts out to uh, Sarah Del Rey as well. She's spectacular. Yes, uh, yes, okay. yes, she is. I mean, we can go. We could go down the line for like favorites. You know, um, you know. I mean, Karma is definitely somebody that redefined. Velvet Sky, I think, is another great one. Like, I, I think like half the girls they had Tara like, initially. Tara, Victoria slash Tara. You know, I mean, God, they had a cage match between her and Mickey mm-hmm. James. That was tremendous. Uh, right, say what year. you want. Say what you want. ODB. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, th- thanks for that. Recognizing women wrestling. Santina Morella. Santina, yeah. She had a good run. Yeah. <laughs> and Harvey. with that, we toss to Mad Mike's Minute of Mayhem. <laughs> Young boys and girls, fans and friends across the land, it's Mad Mike once again with your Minute of Mayhem. Now, God willing, this iPod works this week. Because I have something very important to say. WWE forgot that Raw went three hours. Yeah, it's weird. Because they kind of showed a dark match as the main event of Raw. Christian versus Damian Sando. Technically, that was the main event because it was the last match. It's weird. It's weird. Damian Sando. Raw main eventer. Okay, fair enough. But anyway, um, yeah, it seems like when they were looking at the run sheet, someone decided to change last minute and they wanted the tag team main event, which was actually a really cool main event. I mean, CM Punk almost doing the five knuckle shuffle, John Cena doing the knee to the face and the bulldog. Come on, that's fantastic. It's like Austin Rock all over again. Uh, but yeah, it was very odd ending to Raw. Like, because the Cena standing in the middle of the ring thing, usually that's where you see, right in the little corner, like, WWE 2012, Raw, whatever. But no, they had another half hour left. And it was weird. But anyway, um, I also wanted to talk about Aces and Assholes in TNA, because as I was watching TNA last week, I had an interesting idea. 
I would love it if Austin Aries was behind the Aces and Assholes. Because, I mean, if you think about it, based on the internet reports, it looks like Aces and Eights is comprised of a whole bunch of guys who are no names, for lack of a better term. I mean, Luke Gallows, um, this Wes Briscoe, or whoever he was that debuted, it seems like it's going to be a bunch of lesser guys. And who better to lead a rebellion of people like that than Austin Aries, who has been fighting for the little guy? I mean, hell, you could even have Joey Ryan in there. If you had Aces and Eights be revealed as a faction led by Austin Aries and Joey Ryan, that would be fucking amazing. But instead, they're probably going to fuck it up, and given that Bane is the leader of Aces and Eights, uh, it's probably going to be revealed to be Jeff Jarrett, which is horrible. But, um, SummerSlam is this weekend, as you all know. Uh, I would like to elaborate that I'm really not that excited for SummerSlam. The, uh, the pre-show match is actually the one that's most interesting to me, because we could see Claudio Castagnoli become U.S. Champion, and then turn it into the very European Championship. Not gonna happen. Way too creative, way too fun, WWE would never do it. But, we have the main event, I guess, is Triple H against Brock Lesnar! You know, as Paul Heyman likes to call him. And, um, that is the topic. Remember, uh, the, the terrible Brock Lesnar match? I think it was a Royal Rumble where he, uh, wrestled Bob Holly. Oh, and... that was so bad. Yeah. Remember the whole presence for that, or the premise for that was that he had, we well, had legitimately actually, uh, uh, broke, broke, his, neck. broke his neck in a match. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, like you, he was like, you broke my neck. No one gives it... a shit. It just <laughs> didn't take. No, no, no. It was really just just a throwaway, really. So, um, well, well, I mean, the neck breaking didn't take. Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> fuck you! <laughs> fuck Bob Holly. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm glad that motherfucker retired. <laughs> thanks, thanks, man, Mike, for that. Of course. Uh, so, uh, what? Uh, SummerSlam this weekend. Excited? Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, you're into it. A few matches. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I think a lot of the card is really good. I'm very excited for the Intercontinental titles being defended, the uh, Jericho Dolph Ziggler match, tag you know, team, tag team titles are on the line. Fucking the yeah. U.S. title is on the line. Wait, yeah, on the pre-show, but okay. Hold on, counts. I I have. They're they're one belt away, and I don't know the answer to this, <clears throat> which is why I have to ask you guys. Is the women's belt being defended? No, I don't Not think so. Not that I know. Oh, look at that! But well, you know, it, it could get thrown in there, though. They would literally throw it in just you know. Who, who has that? Layla. Layla. <laughs> the Layla still has it. Yeah. Ugh. Yep. It's gross. Oh, this oh. this goes to prove my point. Uh, last week, uh, fan of the week, big uh, BPC said that um, he wasn't exactly happy with me because of my views on women wrestling. Yeah. We all watch wrestling, and half of us didn't know who the women's champion was still. Well, that's 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 because that's, of how WWE's treating it. You want me to take it seriously? Make me take it seriously. The problem is WWE doesn't take it seriously. Exactly, so why should I? <laughs> so you take seriously what WWE tells you to. Don't you? I, I so where do I begin at how that. wrong would that is? <laughs> they it's had only fifty percent wrong. They had a midget as the GM. Uh-uh. They still have a midget as the GM. No, uh-uh. yeah, but she's a cute midget. She's uh-uh. a more adorable midget now. True. No, I think Chaj is only fifty percent wrong. I mean, if they're not going to put any effort into it, I mean, nothing good's going to come out of it. In, I mean, yeah, they're going to. There are some things that they really want you to super take seriously that you'll never take seriously, but I mean, you can. Like, it's pretty blatant like, when they don't give a shit. Yeah. Like, for example, old men going around uh, saying this business every other word. That they want us to take seriously. Yeah, okay, okay. And then we're like, <laughs> that's, or at I least that's the reaction I have. 
Hey, here's a, here's some things that WWE would rather have me take seriously. Um, Seamus stole a Ferrari. And pooped in it. And pooped in it. Um, <laughs> I love how it started. Is that poop on the car? Seamus <laughs> pooped on the car. Seamus <laughs> pooped in the car. <laughs> um, Brodus Clay comes out and dances every week. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, they have the one man rock band come out and sing a solo every week. Yep. Ryback. Enough said. <laughs> That's just a short list of things that WWE would rather have me take seriously than one of their major championships. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Priorities are messed up, and you would think of the three hours we would get it. How about how about Raw ending fifteen minutes early, like a pay per view? <laughs> they, um, they couldn't fill. <laughs> and then I mean, wasn't it like the weirdest off putting thing that they've done in a while though? It was horrible. Everything was about cold. I'm sorry, everything about it was horrible, especially when we're like forty five minutes in. It's because they usually go to the fifteen minute overrun. Yeah, but when yep. we're, so we're when we're forty five minutes in, and it's just basically Triple H and Brock Lesnar going for like <laughs> twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, I love how they just assume that you know the time limitations don't apply to them. It's fucking ridiculous. It was <sighs> I wait I for those that were in the Google Hangout, I was going to do a drinking game. Uh, where I drank every time Triple H mentioned the word this business, and they didn't talk at all. And, and so, because yeah. they knew you were going to turn into an alcoholic if you would have done the game. Instead, we have a car accident outside and a kidnapping. Allegedly, yeah. Allegedly kidnapping. Um, <laughs> I, I love that Brock Lesnar, I, I mentioned this before, destroys Shawn Michaels in the car, in, in a car accident, or whatever. In the parking lot. And then what does he do? He takes him to the wrestling ring. <laughs> because apparently yeah. that will do more damage. Than no, it was all about the presentation, lot. WrestleFan. It's all about doing it in front of everybody on the grand stage in the ring. Everything yeah. centers on the ring, man. Yes. Speaking of doing it in front of everyone on the grand stage, can we talk about oh. JTG last night? Oh, oh <laughs> God. Yeah, what about him? Uh, apparently he, one week he bitches on Twitter about not being able to get a match and then he gets a match next week where he gets squashed by, uh, what's his name? And, um, I've, I've heard through the grapevine that, um, they sat everyone down in the locker room and they were like, look, if you guys are upset about your position on the roster, speak your mind now. Everybody's safe. And nobody spoke up because they were just like, this motherfucker just got fired. (laughs) <laughs> we are not putting our necks on the line. And apparently, apparently, it wasn't just positions on the. This, you know, stuff. I can't confirm any of it, but from the reports I've heard, there were reported names that are upset with the way that uh, they're getting money. I guess because apparently WWE I've, I've heard didn't about really. That. They were mad about because apparently days. WWE didn't really pay them properly for uh, their time in the in the Brazil tour. Hmm. And they were very upset. I think that some of the names listed was like Zack Ryder, Santino Morella, Natalia, um, and like it was Hawkins a clerical and Ryder, error and though, and they're going to send out new checks. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's what I heard that they're they're trying to amend it. So, but so the, I mean, this this is one of those things where they everybody's on Twitter. So now they have this open forum to they're encouraged, I'm sure, to use Twitter and communicate with people, and that's just another chance for people to talk you know and and be honest and if they're honestly like what the hell you know then it's gonna leak out for at least a few of these guys right you know they, it's not like everybody has a degree in social media or anything that knows how to do it you know or <laughs> or, or or you know or they maybe they just have that 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 thought that you know nobody's listening so i'm just gonna you know vent. let my steam yeah vent let, let the steam out on that you know, everyone know, football listens. players. Football players do the same thing. That's why San Antonio Holmes isn't a stealer anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I mean, this I mean, this is just people need to learn that lesson. You know, um, and, and it doesn't make WWE look good if uh, their town saying you know blah don't get matches. Now I wonder because that's really Zack Ryder's premise. 
So is mm-hmm. he in this kind of idea? I don't, well, I've, well I, it's kind of odd because you know, was his premise when he first started, and it still and is. Then, and it still is. But, well, he's but, like, then, but then he got that big push. Yeah. He was on Raw every week, and he was doing all this stuff, and now he hasn't been on TV for, you know, how many weeks? Mm -hmm. So there's a question to say, maybe, you know, he's serious about, you know, being upset that he's not at Raw, or, you know, I don't know. Can we talk about his big push? Okay. Because that didn't seem like a big push to me. Uh, What Zack Ryder got was a third fiddle in a John Cena storyline versus Kane then he also mixed in Eve. It didn't yeah, seem like a really big push to me. And a, and a two week run as U.S. champion. I don't know. Well, yeah. still, there, there was it was the ride, and I think a lot of people say you know it, it was the ride and the chase that was the most interesting thing. You know, I mean, he ended up what well, he, he won the belt from Dolph, Dolph Ziggler, didn't he? Yeah. And that was that was really well done, and they're still playing it up on their show. Like, <laughs> and then he lost to Jack Swagger. Too, then he lost like. to Jack Swagger, who lost to the Santino. But that that belt's in trouble, anyways. But still, it got the people behind him, and that's what counted. And and I think the people are still going to ride it. Anytime he shows up, people are going to get excited for it. You know, well, people fucking love him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and and I think we, maybe he's doing the right thing. Hey, I'm not on Raw, so I'm going to do a QA. Hey, I wasn't on Raw this week, but blah blah blah. You know, he's not really bitching about it. He's just like, eh, I wasn't on Raw, but I'm still going to do cool well, shit. Well, some of it, some of his comments have been kind of like, uh, "Thanks for not putting me on Raw this week, guys." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the guy that I you sh- have a web, but he does have a web series that's featured pretty prominently on WWE.com. So, but that's a, and that's the thing that was the that was also one of the side reports going with this whole money thing. Yeah. Was the fact that of WWE taking over sort of his show, and the fact that because of that now he's not getting money from uh, advertising uh, for the show anymore. Oh wow! It's all going straight to WWE, and that's not. But he wanted, but he apparently he wanted W. His goal was that WWE would take it over. That way, you know, he could still maintain the show and still do the show. Yeah. But apparently, WWE is getting all the money for it. Yeah, I mean that's that's the way it goes. It should be disseminated back on him if if he's getting a lot of ad revenue off of his show. Uh, because from what I you know again I don't know how it works in WWE, but I, you know from what I hear you get you know you get like you know additional money when when like your shirt sells or, or your toy sells or or something like that or you get on a pay per view like it's it's it, it it builds you know you have your base pay and it's up from there right. right. Um, so I would hope maybe this is just a new thing that they need to figure out. How does it apply to the web? We know how it works with DVDs. We know how it works with all the other trademarking stuff. But how, how do we start to split out the YouTube revenues? And, you, and WWE is consistently. There's a report that's out about the, the top viewed uh, uh, channels on YouTube and WWE. And because, of course, you know, we, we know uh, YouTube uh, actually put a lot of money into a lot of uh, people, uh, Bobby's brought up the Nerdist uh, networks before, at least on Gold mm-hmm. here. Geek, um, Geek and Sundry is Geek another and one. Geek and Sundry, which is um, Felicia Day's group. Shaq yep. got some money. Tony Hawk's been doing a channel there. WWE Fan Nation is consistently in, I want to say, the top five. Usually it's second. And I don't even know who's the first beyond them. Um, so if anybody's making money on YouTube, it's fucking WWE. Yeah. So, so if anybody need, and a grant and, and again, what they're making off of YouTube maybe may pale in comparison to what they're making off of TV deals, pay per views, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, other other deals. Uh, Source Fed is first, uh, says Bobby. Uh, good, they deserve it. Uh, wow, good for them. Um, <laughs> holy shit! I love those guys. Which is a uh, what's his name? Uh, DeFranco, Philip DeFranco. Philip DeFranco. Uh, yeah, and uh, Ani DeFranco. No, I was waiting for it. Hey, he says Bobby. Uh, sorry, Bo Diggity's in there. He says uh, WWE so. will get the ad money until someone big like Cena or HBK uh, complains about not getting that cut. I mean, that's what happened. I don't think anybody got D- uh, money for DVDs or anything like that until uh, uh, Jesse Ventura started raising a stink in the eighties. That's why for a yeah. while, that's why for a while you had his commentary cut out of DVDs um, mm-hmm. or, or yeah. tapes or whatnot. You know, it's like, what? This is weird. I don't remember this blank spot here. Who's he talking yeah. to? You know, um, I, I honestly, with that whole WWE Nation on YouTube, 
Mm-hmm. I want to know which of their shows is the highest because I love Are You Serious? Yeah, yeah, Are You Serious? I mean, it, and and just like videos, I honestly I watch uh, SmackDown on YouTube. I, I watch their right. version of it because I can bring it up on my Xbox for the most part and watch it. Um, and I, I think that's great. It's a little janky on mine. Like, it keeps dropping out, like Mad Mike's video was doing earlier. And and, and I think it's something they're doing, because I, I don't see that as much with other videos. Like, I'll sit there and watch SourceFed for an hour, but I can't watch, like, 20 minutes of uh, SmackDown without buffering. So. Mm-hmm. But. Um, yeah, I say that, hey, Ryder isn't on that level. No, he isn't, but if he's one of the guys on there getting most of those hits, and, I mean, well, hell, it, it, it's just a, a matter of us looking at YouTube and, and seeing seeing the hits. But then who's to say what when you get to that level, you yeah, know? Yeah, well, it's it just somebody raising a stink you, that's making you money. Do you have to reach a single level to get to that level? Yeah. Well, uh. I don't know, but well, it, even at that point, you know, Cena, you know, Cena's prominently displayed on here, of course, you know, um... I don't know. Here we go to the must see videos and let's let's see see what these guys are doing. Um, I mean, we're looking at like ninety thousand for Are You Serious? Uh, just on like the most recent stuff, at least. Yeah, um, it's not bad at all. I mean, no, 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 and especially something for like like that. It's going to be a straight character, you know, one one character show. Dolph Ziggler's, Ziggler's show from uh, uh, recently uh, the, the WWE Download show is at thirty seven thousand. Uh, here's another Are You Serious at one hundred eight thousand. Foreign Exchange is at 59. Um, it's a couple clips. Uh, Z, Z uh, Long Island Story at 100,000. So it, it, it's neck and neck with the best ones on there. And uh, and of course, I, I bet like the stuff like Backstage Fallout here is uh, sitting at 220,000. Uh, I'm, I'm sure your, your Smackdowns and everything like that are going to be a pretty high percentage um, as you go through here. So... I, I, the problem, the problem with the whole thing is, well, one, they figured out that they can sell Zack Ryder merchandise without actually having to put him on TV, and two, uh, he, I mean, them not getting royalties from these uh, YouTube videos. I mean, I could see that it's totally understandable. The problem is they're all under these independent contractor contracts, yeah. which basically they're just fucking puppets you know they have no rights whatsoever wwe can drop them at a moment's notice break contract do whatever the fuck they want and that's the problem and it's it it will never change because it's basically a matter of you should be happy that you're getting what you're getting there it's the biggest wrestling company in the world it's considered the top of the mountain it's the shit it's the the childhood dream is to go wrestle in WWE for so many people so they can do whatever they want just because they have the big paydays and they can say, you know, fuck it, you wrestled for WWE. Look at Virgil. He wrestled for WWE for a little while and he fucking lives the rest of his life on that alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, that's it's a shitty life, as we know when we met him, but... I mean that's something that's something you can do. They can just do whatever they want with their talent and be done with it. Because right. they because they remember you from TV. I mean how how many of those guys are mm-hmm. like, oh, you were on TV. Here's twenty bucks for a photo. You know, yeah. and that yeah. that adds up. You know, um, mm-hmm. that's what the con was a lot of that. To be honest, <laughs> you know. So I mean, who who's a, you know John Morrison had his fans, but you know he was no, you know he was no Virgil. You know Virgil's more iconic than John Morrison was. You know, yeah, it's just sad to say. Sorry, John Morrison. <laughs> I'm a fan. I, I don't know if I agree with you on that, but <laughs> well, you, you you were back in the day. I mean, Virgil I, was I, Virgil was there. You look I, back. You look back when the Andre the Giant and and the two Earl Hebners and and the title got taken from Hogan. Virgil was there. You look at <laughs> you look at Summer the first Summer Slam where uh, Elizabeth took off her skirt and 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 shocked the Million Dollar Man and Andre the Giant. Virgil was there somewhere. You know, I mean, he was he was like, like saying the he was like the where's Waldo more. of the the hot angles at the turn of the uh, the to the nineties. That's like saying the you look at when they I raised the flag at Iwo Jima. He was there. Uh, yeah, when the challenger blew up, he was there. <laughs> He's still under investigation for that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, exactly. Um, that caught time your car died because you forgot to add oil. Virgil was there. Mm. 
it was siphoning the oil to it sell for money. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Half the <laughs> <Patreon. laughs> Wow. So, yay Twitter. Um, we just started a new meme. <laughs> Did we? Virgil was there. Yep. <laughs> Isn't that a picture of Virgil with the money? Like, no, we we gotta find a happy picture. Happy picture of yeah, Virgil of everything. Is, is there one? There, there's Fuck. gotta be one. There's uh, entire memes dedicated to the lonely Virgil. <laughs> right, we're changing that. We gotta make it more positive. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna find a happy one. Happy and Virgil, then, and then put him in places that Virgil could have never been. <laughs> well, I almost got lynched. Virgil was there. <laughs> I'm sure he was. <laughs> that time that Hitler spoke in Munich, Virgil was there. Whoa. That one time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he didn't live. He didn't live there. He had to come home eventually. <laughs> when Martin Luther King had a dream, I, Virgil I will was visit, there. I will visit. I will visit every town once, <laughs> and then I will go home. The Nazis will do it all for them. They're like little remote control soldiers. <laughs> I, I was talking about Virgil, was that, not Hitler. Was that even German? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Don't you know that all my accents kind of blend together after a while? Yeah. I was talking. Oh, and you were you were talking about Virgil in, yes. in Munich that one time. Yes. I was talking about Hitler. Yes. I was like, no, he probably Hitler was probably big in Munich. Yeah. That's why I was like, one time, shit. Uh, oh, oddly, boy. that was also LB's Virgil impression. Oh. Virgil, yeah. Speaking of black people can, without jobs, can you tell me what time it is? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wow. Well, that works. Did you really what did you say, say that, Russell? I said, speaking of black people without jobs, AEW got fired. And he is really fucking angry on Twitter. Holy <laughs> shit. Somebody's like, yeah. I'm glad. So he, he retweeted somebody, uh, comment retweeted somebody that I read Monday night that was like, I'm glad you got fired. You're you're such a bad example by how you're carrying on on Twitter. And he just re- his response was, fuck you. <laughs> Whoa! So he's for, taking the Marty for, Gennetti approach. He on really, Twitter. I guess so. He's just like he's angry. Black he's like, man. well, first they they suspended his uh, official WWE account, which I think you're going to see happen. That's the WWE's property, you know, whatever. Uh, so he started his uh, his own account, uh, which is like the big something BJ or something. Um, <laughs> big fucking BJ. I, I think it is. It's like yeah. <laughs> What's the score, Bobby? Uh, thanks. Um, but but yeah, he's super pissed off. We should interview him. Um, yeah, I don't know. Hey, I, this this was it's stupid. It's stupid in the long run. And and, and another victim of the uh, Linda McMahon uh, senatorial campaign. Yeah, because yep. apparently that was a factor in him getting fired. Was that he tweeted. Uh, something in the fact that he supported the Linda McMahon campaign and he encouraged people to support her as well. And apparently the rule is that WWE superstars are not allowed to talk about Linda's campaign, good or bad. Wow. So it wasn't well, just the Kobe drug. Dumb. It was okay, he got honestly, he got fired one because he made a Kobe Bryant rape joke. Two because of the Linda McMahon thing. And three because he made a Kobe Bryant rape joke and he's fucking AW. <laughs> That's a, those are the three reasons he got fired their official statement was he showed poor judgment uh, when on the microphone during promos you know, what's, you know what else is poor judgment and I'm not defending AW don't get me wrong here I get why Sakamoto? he was fired but you know what was poor judgment Michael Cole using a gay slur against Josh Matthews on Twitter and what did, and what did Michael Cole have to do say oh I'm sorry it was taken out of context what? Open? Taken. Taken out of Taken. context. You're Taken. in college. <laughs> but okay. honestly, like... Well, well, Michael Cole has tenure. So... <laughs> but I, right. And that's, <laughs> that's tenure was old. And that's my point. I mean, you know, really, it is. I mean, you, you build that up as like, you, you, like, yo, Shawn Michaels can fuck up bigger than AW any day. And, and still have a job. Because he makes them mm-hmm. money. Michael Cole has been there long enough. And has told enough stories and makes them money because he sells pay per views. You know, he shows he, he's been their show for uh, fifteen years. You know, no, I get what you're saying, and, and I agree with that completely. What Did you see the thing I posted on the Facebook page? Big Show apparently made the same Kobe Bryant yeah. rape joke like six years yeah. ago. 
Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that was six years ago. Uh, what's his and, face? But, and it's because he's Big Show, <laughs> you know? That I go back to, Vince McMahon said the fucking N-word. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> well, he's the owner of the company. Exactly. Nobody's going to fire his ass, right? Unless he gets caught with steroids. But what about yeah. Albert making a Japanese joke on tell? Did yeah, he that's funny. Why it is on tell. I, I don't see why Albert is such a big commodity. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was Lord Tensai is the greatest wrestler to ever put on tights. Yeah, that, <laughs> well, oh, and, and, you know, speaking of which, hey, that was an odd, odd one. Tensai and Sin Cara this week. That was a little weird. Hmm? It was a squash match, but in reverse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Just ten side. Ford tra- train wreck. There you go. Um, <laughs> oh, he's just ten side. He was demoted. There yeah, you go. He's no longer there you go. Demoted. That's what he got. That's what he got. Wrestle fan. He got. He got tout. Tout lashed. Well, no, he dropped. They dropped the Lord ten side thing like the first week he debuted. Whatever, because they knew they knew where it was going to go. They lost they like, his <laughs> Lost his lordship. That's why he's so angry. There you go. Oh, jeez. Um, I, I don't even know where to go from there. Hey, SummerSlams this weekend. <laughs> you yeah. tried that already. Predictions. Oh, that. Predictions. Predictions. Let's go down the line because I closed the window. I fucking love when we do predictions. <laughs> there you go. All right. I'll be. I'll be. Tell me. Oh, Brock, Brock Lesnar, Triple H. Nobody. 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 It's going to end in a no. No, I, I think that if they want this experiment to continue, Brock Lesnar has to continue or nobody wins. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, fan, wrestle fan? That match is Chris Benoit to me. It doesn't exist. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, shit. God damn. Wheels? What it is. I don't give a fuck, honestly. Uh, wrestle fan just got uh, raw. <laughs> I'm my prediction, Lesnar. Lesnar, all right. Uh, Chachi. Hi, I'm Chachi, and I think it's going to be Brock Lesnar. No, uh, I, I, I am, um... Wow. I, well, I brought up the wrong graphic, so I went with it. Oh, okay. Um, for your audio listeners. Uh, no, I really, I, uh, I, yeah, it has, kind of has to be Brock at this point, right? Yeah, you totally. know? But, I don't know. I, I It's going to be a spectacle. It'd be like, well, what's going to happen? Uh, and that's going to be the only reason. It doesn't and, have And you know to that's going to be the main event. What do you think, Chachi? Um, it ha- if they, like Lunchbox said, if they want the spect- spectacle to continue, they they can't bring back uh, the Unstoppable Beast and have him lose two pay-per-views. There you it, go. It's got to be Brock. There you go. Uh, what about uh, the triple th- threat? We got Punk, Cena, and Big Show. How about you, Wheels? Oh, my. Um, honestly, it... I was going to say it should be a good thing, but it's Big Show in there, and, well, that's the only thing that's going to cock it up. So, honestly, I'm putting Punk in for the win. All right. Wrestle fan. I'm, I'm going to go with Punk, too. I And it's it's interesting because it's like it feels like Punk's been sort of running this whole storyline, and Cena and Big Show are sort of like side characters. Yes. Does anyone seem to notice that to me? I mean, that's yeah. the way I see it. Um, just from the way the promos have been going, I I definitely see Punk winning. Uh, if not Punk, obviously probably Cena. Um, but I don't know. Chachi, I I, I think uh, WWE is going to throw us a swerve. Um, I th- I think Show's going to get it. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, LB. Uh, as much as I I really would like if Punk won, uh, I think Cena's going to get it. But yeah. I'm pulling for Punk. I'm pulling for Punk, too. Like, I'm hoping it's... You, you, you turned him, quote, heel-ish, you know. No, no. Or himself, or whatever. Whatever this is, the la- we've had la- the last uh, few weeks. Um, I, I want to see this go for... I don't want to, to, to see the attitude change, and all of a sudden the belt gets dropped. Right. You know, I want this to, to continue. You know, uh, Cena and him maybe at, uh, at at what Night of Champions is next? Is it? You know, at least that I know Cena's probably going to get it back eventually. But I and I hate that we've kind of dropped the whole Cena finding his smile or whatever the hell was going on uh, <laughs> yeah, beforehand. Just... Well, am I confusing that it was the? Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, embrace the hate the, or whatever. The Batmanification yeah. of Cena. Exactly. The, the side note of that whole triple threat what I've been reading 
is the injection of the new heavy the WWE title coming in. I heard about that. So yeah, that's why. Honestly, it, if I'd rather, I'm thinking honestly, if Punk doesn't take it, Show would to debut that new belt. I don't know. I would love to see Punk like beat he beat all these guys at SummerSlam. He's like, hey, I've been champion almost a year. I've beaten the best. I beat Cena. I beat the. I beat Cena, the guy that introduced this belt. Yeah. So now it's my turn. Yeah. You know. Uh, you know. I mean, whatever they go, if they're going something a little more classic, whatever the next iteration Why? is, you know, it'd be like, you know, I want something that that's re- more respectful for me to carry around. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I hope well, it's not well, the one that's been leaked out, though. Uh, I dude. honestly hope it's not the one that's leaked. I out saw that, but that looks like just a side plate, though. And that's what a lot of people are saying. It's a side plate, but oh god, the please one. let it be a side plate. I haven't plate. seen that yet. <laughs> yeah, me Bo either. Diggity wants us to ta- stop talking about the new belt. <laughs> this is like talking about the new belt in WWE is like talking about the new iPhone. <laughs> Ooh, I'm really excited for the new iPhone. It's, it's all the first it's, time. It's, it's gonna be the first unicorn. time I can get the new one when it comes out. It's gonna be really sweet. It's a unicorn until it happens. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And I'm like, oh shit, there it is. You know. Um, <laughs> the shit is on original iPhone rumor levels. The original one. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, we got Kane versus Daniel Bryan. I, I don't care who wins. I just want to see D where it goes. Gives a fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. D Bryan, because what the fuck are they gonna do with Kane if he wins? Yeah, yeah. What does Kane like, get nothing. out of this? They're, it's gonna be Kane the way he's always been. Kane. What kind of faces Kane. You know. Uh, you know, we'll see. Kane is this <laughs> Kane is this strange enigma in the WWE. He's like he's entered this weird area where it doesn't matter if Kane wins or loses. It's not going to help or damage his character either way. He's always been like from the '90s on. Mm-hmm. Mask, no mask, it doesn't matter. He's uh, it, wins and losses have never meant shit to Kane. Yeah, that's why, he, well, and that's why he's like the plug and play wrestler that can just be injected into stuff. <laughs> well, well, you Dude, know, you look at wrestle fan, you look at fifty him. points. You that look at awesome. him like you look at Big Show. Big Show is probably one of the worst records in pro wrestling because he's the monster to beat when you want uh, somebody uh, to look good. You know, and guess who so, always beats him? John Cena. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Kane's in the I same position. They, yeah, I hate how they build the fact that it's like. Oh my God! See, I picked him up for the F five. He does it all, or for the attitude adjustment. He does it all the fucking time. Yeah, it's not really it's not much surprising. of a spectacle anymore, right? Uh, I see championships being defended. Miz versus Rey Mysterio. I'm guessing most of us are going for Riz. And again, I'm going. Riz? For- Riz? <laughs> yes, I want Riz to win the IC belt. I want Riz to win so bad. Fucking Rey Mysterio wins, and he whips off the mask, and it's fucking Riz. <laughs> Fucking five to eight people in Pittsburgh lose their shit, and the rest of America's like, what the fuck is that? What's going on? <laughs> five to eight people no. in the Pittsburgh region. Five to eight. <laughs> there you go. Everybody listens to Let's Play. Um, what? That was a... <laughs> yeah. And, in addition us. to... I was it. talking about us. Us on the show. All right, uh, we got a uh, tag team championship, Kingston and Truth against the primetime players. I think this thing, I think those guys get buried with that AW. Yep. Sadly, yes, but I hope they I agree. Wars, gonna have some Mexicans and fucking race wars. And off show, we got the U.S. championship, Morella versus. Antonio Cesaro. Let's give it to Cesaro. Come on, do something. Cesaro. With Honestly, do something with the Santino, belt. How the fuck can Santino beat Cesaro? He got. He lost after twice. Jo- after after him, Cesaro destroying him for how many weeks on SmackDown? We're gonna expect Santino just to pull up the Cobra. Yeah. And, yeah. And Cesaro's gonna go down to that. Are you fucking hey, exactly. kidding? Hey, people always go down when I pull out my Cobra. Whoa. Wow. wow. Yeah. Heelish. Yeah. Yeah. No. All these okay. bitches checking out my britches. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at that. One, two, three, four. We have we line. have five matches uh announced for the show proper, uh, to your Divas belt thing uh before. There's there's lots of room to stick something like that. Maybe even a Ryback match. Oh, oh great. Hey. 
<laughs> right back versus uh, Jinder Mahal. This is the blow off at SummerSlam. Oh, yeah. There we go. Wow. Christian can wow. interfere. There you go. Maybe. Doing stuff? All right. On that note, I think we need to wrap it up here, guys. So let me know. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Mm, wheels. I think I have an idea. Yeah, and you're correct. What did I learn from wrestling? That I am not safe anywhere, even by playing music. People try to lynch a crippled black guy. That's harsh, man. That. <laughs> That's like the heaviest shit we've ever had on the show. <laughs> LB, what'd you learn? Oh, Christ. Uh, I learned that Shawn Michaels is fucking worthless. <laughs> <laughs> He's not helpful to anyone. He's just makes Triple H feel bad about himself, and then he gets his stupid balding arm broken. Fuck Shawn Michaels. <laughs> wait, wow. wait, wait, wait. How does an arm go bald? <laughs> it's his head, and then... <laughs> yeah, because his head was, like, gleaming. <laughs> How about you, wrestling That's what I fan? Learned. Uh, I learned that from wrestling this week that Caitlyn... Is my new favorite diva. Well, not my new favorite, but she's becoming my new favorite diva. Not just because she wrestled on Raw, because holy shit, you got the pinfall. Um, but because if you watch the uh, WWE inbox, I think it's called, they're like where they ask questions to the wrestlers that fans sent in. Uh, they asked the question uh, if you weren't a WWE superstar and you were a fan, what superstar would you like to meet? And everyone gave the generic, ooh, I'm a big Shawn Michaels fan. Ooh, I li- I'd like to meet Vince McMahon. <laughs> Uh, questions and she said that the one wrestler that caught her eye and that she would want to meet if she was a fan was Stan Stansky. Nice. Mm-hmm. nice. She's fucking amazing, and There's she somebody gets that it pays attention. God, push Caitlin for the love of God. Chachi, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Um, I learned that uh, giant cans of soup and sandwiches <laughs> often get into city decorated rings and fight each other. And I also learned that wrestling's not real. <laughs> and neither is this show. For that matter, Chachi's questionable, too. Uh, also, something, something I learned again from last week, WWE still doesn't listen to us. Because exactly. there was no Bateman Pitt. <laughs> Sorg. Yes. Sorg, what'd you learn? I learned that hide-and-seek under the ring is hilarious. <laughs> yes. Yes. And yes. thank you, Zuboff, for Zuboff. Yes. Okay. Zumba. Z- Zumboff. I almost call him Kozlov. Uh, for for <laughs> playing along and bringing cu- ch- uh, cameraman Chachi along with him. Yeah. Mad Mike emailed us because he wants us to learn that even though that we've had a, a Wi-Fi enabled computer as a general manager, it took AJ to finally book matches via Twitter. Um, also from the chat room, boo diggity, uh, learned that WWE can't tell time and they have no concept what to do with the third hour and learned that Damien Santel is awesome. Uh, Riz learned that Sunday I will be the Intercontinental Champion and then leave on an ostrich. Um, Bobby yes. FJ Town, by the way, I had to show that video to uh, my wife when we went to the zoo Sunday. Uh, because there was an ostrich encounter, and I kept uh, saying, where's my Rey Mysterio to it? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Bobby FJ Town says that he learned that when asked for comment on AW's release, Tony Atlas responded, (laughs) That's a horrible Tony Atlas impression. I I had to try. (laughs) Oh, it's been a while, it's been a while. Uh, And Bo Diggly, I learned that uh, TNA sucks donkey dick at finishes. Mm. Yeah, I didn't talk about that. Hey, there was a pay per view this past weekend. It was actually <laughs> oh, good, Christ. and it was good. It was good. Yeah, it was good. Hardcore Justice. Go check it out if you haven't had a chance. Um, hey, I guess this has been the Wrestling Man Show. Thanks to our guest Joe Dombrowski joining us again. Fill us in on what's going on with Resolution. Go check them out. I pay per view at uh, GFL TV. Go fight live uh, for that, or join us up in Cleveland, Ohio, at the Natica for. Solution 5. Uh, thanks, everybody. Please check us out. WrestlingMayhemShow.com or on iTunes, Blip TV, Roku, and Stitcher. We're here live every Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. or so Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Drop us a line on the email at good times. Good times. good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or on the voicemail. Don't be a dick. 404-872-0750. <laughs> 
412-206-WMS0 and check out WMS Gold for our links and extras, including an exclusive footage of some uh, in-between stuff here on the show, some fun stuff we were getting into. iOS App Store, Amazon App Store for your Android device. Go check those out. Thanks. I am Sorg for the crew. This has been the Mayhem Show. Out! <laughs>